He has these fish are racing up the water column there. My jig's right there, somewhere in the <laughs> There's just so many fish down there, it's hard to see the jig. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to use your 2D or traditional sonar to find crappie. And then I highly recommend one of these two marker buoys. I will link both these below. Um, if you only have a unit that has some sort of 2D or traditional sonar, this video is for you. It's early July right now up north. These schools are starting to stack up on their deeper edges in terms of 15 to 20, maybe even 22 feet. There's brush piles on this lake, so we're gonna go find some that have crappie on them. I'm gonna show you what they look like on 2D sonar. And uh, we're gonna throw the marquee buoy out. I'm gonna show you how to set the boat up so you can catch some fish. And I'm only gonna use the 2D sonar because I know a lot of you, that's just kind of what you have. So if you were looking for a video, how to use 2D sonar to find crappie, this one's for you. Let's go find some fish. All right, well, I just pulled into my first spot here. And this is what a school of fish looks like when you're going really, really slow. Elongated marks are because I'm only moving less than a mile an hour, but that is a school of crappie, most likely, um, that are schooled up that tight. On this lake, there's largemouth, smallmouth, pike, muskie, and walleye. And there are white bass, so it, it, it could be a school of them, but I'm going to guess these are more schools of crappie than, than white bass. We're gonna find out though. So we're coming over, this is a brush pile right here. See how it's got a much darker uh, readout and it's much thicker through here rather than these small, elongated arcs. That's because these are actual logs right here. But there's our, there are fish, there's a bunch of little bait fish above them, but there's fish on top of it. So we just went over that. I'm gonna back up a little bit and I'm actually gonna throw the buoy out. And as soon as it comes into this side of the screen, that's when my transducer is right over the top of it. So as soon as it comes in the screen there, we're gonna throw our, throw our little parker buoy out. I'm gonna throw it right behind the boat, just like that. And that line is just slowly rolling out. All right, so there are some fish below me, but before we get into uh, talking about where I'm finding these fish and, and what we're looking at, let's talk about the setup. So Garmin, Lowrance, Humminbird, they're pretty much all the same when it comes to 2D traditional sonar. The, the only thing, I guess there's a few things you can change. The first thing you gotta know is what palette you're using. Um, if you go into sonar setup, and appearance, color scheme. Now typically I run, a, what's, this, what's this called, the maroon, where the darker red is for a solid return. So if you go over a rock pile or a brush pile, um, something that's a really hard object, it's gonna give you a dark red return. Um, there are schools of fish right here. And this is a fairly hard bottom coming off this, this actual break. Um, this drops from 10 to about 20 feet right off this edge, and there are brush piles stacked up through here. But that is the hard return. You can you can change it to uh, some some of you hummingbird guys. This is probably what your default is set at, where the yellow is the hard image. Yeah, there's fish cruising around, but I'm, I like going with the maroon. Um, the other thing you have to understand is your frequency. So. Typically, on most older sonar units, like this Humminbird, this is a first generation Humminbird from 2016, the 2D sonar is a dual sonar, so it uses 83 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz. The 83 kilohertz is a wider cone, it covers a one-to-one -one ratio. So, if you're using an 83 kilohertz cone, if you have it set at 83 uh, on this, this uses chirp, and I'll get into that in a second, but if you have it at 83, if I'm in 16, 17 feet of water, that cone diameter as I'm trolling over these fish is 17 feet across. If you're using 200 kilohertz, it's one third of that. So 18 feet, it is six feet across, okay? One third of eight, basically 18 divided by three. That's about six foot diameter of a cone. So understand when you're using the lower frequencies, you're get, covering a larger swath of the lake bottom the higher frequencies is a narrow cone, you're not seeing as much of the lake bottom now. I wanted to talk about 
the cool one of the cool things about Garmin is this beam adjustment. So typically, like I said, uh, most units had a dual beam, so it was 83 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz. Garmin's unit shows you the actual degree of angle and the kilohertz unit. And most modern units, Humminbirds, Lowrance, anything basically after I think 2019, 2018, should have this chirp function. And chirp, instead of using a single frequency, uses a multiple, multiple frequencies, which is supposed to give you a much clearer and crisper picture. So you no normally you just turn the chirp on. Right now it's a 19 degree cone. Um, that's a should give you about a little over a third of the width. So right now we're at 18 feet. This cone in diameter, left and right, and this way, is about six feet wide. So keep that in mind when you're dropping your jig down. And that six feet is at the lake bottom. As you go up the water column, let's say I was only nine feet down. If I drop my jig nine feet down, that cone is only three feet wide in diameter. So be aware of that. It tells you right here on your garments. <laughs> I didn't even see that. So I was right, about six feet. So if I turn my chirp on, six and a half feet, there's your cone diameter. It tells you right there on the bottom of your A scope, six and a half feet wide. So was, yeah, that's right, it's a little more than six feet. And as you go up your, your lower frequencies, which means you're uh, wider the cone angle, this one can go to 24 degrees or 145 kilohertz. And that's eight, a little over eight feet wide. Now understand something, as you widen out the cone, you're telling the unit to take in more data. So as you saw, all these fish just got really, really small or really thin. But as I go up in frequency, which lowers my, or reduces my size of my cone, these fish will start to show up a little bit thicker. I'm gonna leave it back on shirt. And that's because you're not telling the unit to take in as much data of the water column. This gets into the next thing of setting either making sure you're not too deep and you're not trying to see too much on your screen. If you go to your range, then you can manually set your depth. Now typically I would go at 30 feet, um, but because I'm only in about 20 feet of water, I'm just gonna leave it on auto because I know it's gonna show me more of that screen than less. And let me explain why that's important. The main reason you want to uh, shrink your screen is because of the pixels that it's going to designate to a square uh, inch or area of water. Let me explain something. Let's say this is your uh, this is your crappie for whatever reason, it's shaped like this. When the transducer sends a signal down, it's going to hit part of that fish, and the slower you go over it, the more it's going to ping off this fish, which is why you see all these elongated lines. As I'm not really moving that fast. If you were to go two miles an hour, it might only hit this fish three or four times. That's why you see these sharp arcs because normally a fish is more shaped like this. So it's gonna ping off the tail of it, the middle and the head, and it's gonna give you this arc shape. So if you're fishing for crappie like we are today, you're going to wanna shrink that screen or actually zoom in. So you're gonna set your auto depth from zero to 30. Now I have it set on auto because it's only 20 feet deep. so the fish are gonna show up just fine. But for those of you guys that fish in a little bit deeper water, 40, 50 feet, set your depth to 30 for two reasons. One, you're gonna be able to see the fish better. It's gonna give more pixels to smaller fish. You're gonna see the bait fish, you're gonna see the crappie really well. And two, it's not really ethical to fish for crappie deeper than 30 feet. Um, if, you, if you catch them that deep, odds are pretty good. The mortality rate is really high uh, because their air bladders expand as you move them through the wa water column deeper than 30 feet. We're not really into that stage yet. Usually that's late summer getting into the fall and into the winter when these crappies slide out in that 25 to 30 plus foot. Typically right now, most of July and even into August, these crappie are gonna be between 15 to 22 feet. So we don't really have that issue. All right, so we are set up on our buoy right here. We're right over top of them. I just started the screen here. Let's, uh, let's show you on. I'm just using the 2D, which is underneath the trolling motor. I'll show you this real quick. So there is our, there's our brush pile. And we are, we're pretty much right on top of it. 
Control motor's kind of moving us around a little bit. It, we got a little bit of wind, so. But that is, that's our brush pile now. It's not actually this long. We're not moving anywhere, so that signal starts on the top right corner and it gets sent down. And it, once it hits something, it gets sent back up. And if you're not moving, let's say this, this log right here, if it just gets sent down and starts pinging back and forth, it's just gonna look like a straight line going across the screen. These brush piles are only about five, six feet long, not, I don't know, that looks almost like 20 feet long, uh, but there they are again. We're just gonna kinda, we're anchored right over the top of them with our anchor lock function. So we're right over top of these fish. There's fish right on top of it, right on top of those brush piles. There's those longer arches. Again, we're not moving that much, so that signal's just pinging back and forth. And if those fish aren't moving, they're just gonna look like straight line. Another thing I get asked about is what's called the amplitude meter or the A-scope. So if you go to your menu screen, um, so in our setup, advanced, oops, installation, appearance, appearance. Go to your appearance, you see this thing called A-scope. Let me turn that on, Ooh, not bad. Turn that on. You'll see on the right side of the screen, on the Hummingbird, this is called RTS, which is real-time sonar. Garmin calls it A-scope. This is real, like true exact time of when a fish or something passes below the transducer. Now this transducer is connected to the trolling motor. So there's a transducer on the bottom of the trolling motor. So anytime my trolling motor goes over something, it's gonna show up in this amplitude scope area. And then as, usually if you're trolling straight forward, this would be historical data. So as, as you're from the right side, this is the real true time. And as it moves to the left, this is, as you go over it, it starts moving right to left. People ask questions about that. So that's what that is. I'm going to actually try to film a crappie come up and show you what a crappie looks like hitting a jig on that ace scope. All right, there are fish right below the transducer. So I'm gonna drop it straight down below the transducer. I'm gonna turn my gain up a little bit. Oops. Uh, gain. Up, 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 up. Just so we can see the jig drop down below that transducer. See these fish run up at it? There's one. I didn't get the jig on the screen, but those fish kind of just ran right up at it. Not, not a big guy. Just a little fish. Come on. Flop off the boat. There you go. There is a ton of them down there. Let's try that again. Drop it right below the trolling motor here. See as these fish are racing up the water column there? My jig's right there, somewhere in the, there's just so many fish down there, it's hard to see the jig. There's one. The little fish are up top. My jig dropping down. It's right there. That line. Oh, there's a fish just shot up at it. There's one. Holy let go. Those those fish rising up like that, those fish are just running up at my jig. That's all they're doing. There's a, oh, there he was. There he is. See that line going straight up? It's hard to see, but that's that fish run. As I set the hook, he's not that big of a fish. That's why the line wasn't that big. But hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what these crappie look like a 2D sonar when you're sitting right over the top. A lot of people get confused when they're sitting right over the top of fish and they look like straight lines and they think, you know, your sonar's broken. This kind of looks the same way with down imaging, which I'm gonna do a different video on. But your sonar's not broken. This is how it's supposed to be. I'm gonna drop right in, right in top of this brush pile. See, this one has a yellow scale. I probably should change that palette so it's the same.
turn it to maroon so everything's the same. There you go. So that dark red, that was probably confusing some of you of why that yellow screen was there. But that dark red is that hard image or that hard return. Your brush pile and these uh, blues and these greens, those are those crappie. There's one. There we go. Well, as you can see, as long as you uh, can get over the top, I highly recommend having the transducer on the trolling motor if you're going to be fishing up front. Um, down imaging, 2D sonar, you both got, those are vertical techniques, or vertical sonar techniques, so make sure you're over the top just like this. Man, there's a ton of fish right there. Screenshot that for you. Make sure you're over the top of it, and uh, throw that buoy out. You can catch a bunch of crappie. So, appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I'm gonna keep catching some crappie. Go ahead, take your sonar out, use that down imaging. Find those crappie, catch them up. All right, we'll see ya.